Hello and welcome to the digital rally to reclaim Nestle's troubled water. Thank you to Alicia Brilla for reminding us why we're here and grounding us with your music and passion for water protection. We are so excited to share this event with all of you. And thank you all for joining us. My name is Brett Chamberlain. I use he, him pronouns, and I am the director of community engagement for the Story of Stuff Project. I'm here in Oakland, California, which we recognize as the traditional and unceded ancestral home of the Ohlone people. And I am so pleased to be here with all of you as one of your MCs for today's event. And my name is Megan Clout. You can refer to me with she, her pronouns. I am the communications coordinator for the Wellington Water Watchers here in Canada. I am joining from the traditional Anishinaabek territories occupied by the people of Nipissing and Doki's First Nations whose Aboriginal and treaty rights are recognized by the Robinson-Huron Treaty of 1850 and have lived on these lands since time immemorial. I am so grateful to the Indigenous leaders and allies that I have had the privilege to learn from and am continuing to learn from. As we join here today from lands across North America and around the world, I encourage each and every one of us to take a moment and express our gratitude to the lands that we are joining from and to the Indigenous people who are the traditional stewards of these lands. I invite you to take time to reflect on the systems and structures that some of us benefit from at the expense of others and the ways in which colonialism is one of the ongoing problems contributing to the climate crisis. I encourage you all to express your gratitude to the indigenous land keepers who hold a deep and meaningful relationship with the lands and water that support all life. If you are unaware of whose lands you are joining from, you can visit whose.lands to find out more as we continue to ground ourselves in gratitude I am so pleased to be here today with you as one of your MCs for this event. Thank you for inviting us into your day as we rally together to reclaim Nestle's troubled waters. We want to know where you are tuning in from. So go ahead, say hello, sound off in the comments. You know, Megan, this is a historic event. Why is that, Brett? Well, this is actually the first time that Nestle has inspired a live stream. Nestle is usually responsible for dry streams, not live streams. <laughs> But all jokes aside, nothing can be more important than protecting our most precious natural resource, water, from exploitation by greedy corporations like Nestle, which is why it's so wonderful to see people tuning in from all around the world. Uh, I see Monique saying hi from the Netherlands. I see comments coming in from all around the world. Thank you all for joining us. Welcome, welcome, one and all. Brett, have you heard about the photo booth for this rally? I can see some people have already participated and captured their rally snaps. You can follow the link in the event description and head on over to our virtual photo booth where you can take a rally selfie, add a message and a background. Don't forget, share it on social media so your voice can be heard. Tonight, speakers will be letting you know how you can take action, get involved and contribute. Everything you need can be found at thestoryofstuff.org slash Nestle. We encourage you to open it up in a new tab so you can refer back to it throughout the event. Well, with that housekeeping out of the way, let's get our program started. Here to set the stage is the Story of Stuff Project's Executive Director, Michael Ohini, who's here to tell us a bit more about what we mean by Nestle's troubled waters. Michael, take it away. Thanks, Brett and Megan. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning for those of you just getting up with the rising sun. 
On behalf of the Story of Stuff Project and our partners around the world, I'm thrilled to welcome you to today's rally to reclaim Nestle's troubled waters. For more than a decade now, communities around the U.S. and Canada have been locked in a battle over who the rightful stewards of our water are, the people or privatizers like Nestle. Now, the battles that brave activists have been waging against the theft of our water from Maine to California have become all the more critical. That's because Nestle recently announced the sale of its North American business to two private equity firms. And if you thought Nestle was a bad neighbor, wait until Wall Street gets a hold of all that water. Here's what we know. Nestle removes billions of gallons of water each year from aquifers around North America and then puts it in single-serve plastic bottles to sell for a tidy profit. As you'll hear tonight from the communities in which Nestle removes water, they lose a lot in that process and benefit very little. Their springs run dry. Streams, lakes, and the wildlife they support are lost. Giant water tankers destroy their roads. They dare to sleep. They face lawsuits, character assassination, and more. In return, Nestle offers trinkets, including, I kid you not, donated cases of the very water the company takes from their communities. That no doubt explains why Nestle prefers to operate under the cover of darkness. I've watched this play out over and over. Nestle chooses small, economically depressed communities and lures them in with promises of jobs, community benefits, and, this is a joke, environmental stewardship. All they want is a little water. The company then builds a cozy relationship with elected officials and the regulators meant to oversee their operations. Contracts are hidden from public view, promises are made and then forgotten, and the public is left holding the bag. Make no mistake, water bottling is an extractive business like any other. It puts control of a vital shared resource in private hands. And like all other privatizers, Nestle expects all the benefits and is happy to leave its mess, including the billions of its plastic bottles that end up in landfills, incinerators, or the environment for the public to deal with. Tonight, we're here with six communities in the United States and Canada who've stood up and said, enough is enough. When Nestle sale was announced, we joined hands and demanded Nestle return the water sources in these communities to public stewardship prior to any handover. Now that demand is even more urgent. If Wall Street investment bankers take over Nestle's business, you can bet the first thing they'll do is cut costs to make more money. But there's an opportunity as well. These communities are part of a rising tide of opposition to corporate control of the commons. In fact, what I've found most remarkable about the community standing up to Nestle is they're not just isolated local struggles against a bad neighbor. The folks you'll hear from tonight see themselves as part of a larger fight to secure water justice in places like Flint, Michigan and Jackson, Mississippi, to, pre to preserve our public lands and waters like the water protectors who fought the Keystone Pipeline and to hold corporations to account for the plastic pollution they create. Tonight, you'll hear powerful messages from Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib and water warrior Mard Barlow. You'll hear from the incredible leaders of these local fights against Nestle. And yeah, we're gonna have a little bit of fun too. But most importantly, you'll have an opportunity to jump in to lend your support. So here's what you can do. First, here in the US, we're calling on the Oversight Committee of the US Congress to closely scrutinize the Nestle sale. In Canada, advocates are looking to that country's competition bureau to do the same. Second, we'll be looking to you to hold these new owners to an even higher bar than we held Nestle. If they think this sale is the end of the fight, they're sadly mistaken. And finally, we'll be putting our money where our mouth is, supporting the efforts of these grassroots heroes with every dime raised tonight. So please continue to demand action, speak out, and open your wallets to ensure this fight continues. Thank you so much. Thank you, Michael, for setting the stage and laying out some of the ways that everyone can take action to defend public water and hold Nestle accountable. So remember, at any time during this event, go ahead and open up a new tab, head on over to storyofstuff.org slash Nestle to make a contribution, connect with grassroots groups who are part of this coalition, share a photo from our photo booth, 
or contact government regulators in the US or Canada to push for oversight of this deal. I am now honored to introduce our first featured speaker, US Representative Rashida Tlaib from Michigan's 13th District. Representative Tlaib is a progressive warrior for community health and environmental justice who has served in Congress since 2019, and we are so honored to welcome her here today. Thank you to our water warriors for your relentless fight and determination in the face of limitless corporate greed. We are yet at another crossroad in our fight for Michigan's water against Nestle, and we have to be as alert as ever. The $4 billion sale of Nestle's bottled water operations to private equity firms is deeply disturbing. The game plan for private equity firms is always the same. Strip operations to the bare minimum while maximizing profits and disregarding any long-term effects on our communities. That's why I co-sponsored the Stop Wall Street Looting Act and will continue to push to limit the damage that these kinds of corporate schemes continue to have in our communities. In Everett, Michigan, as you all know, the looting could have, been it could have disastrous effects as a private equity firm takes over Nestle's Ice Mountain operation, which currently should never have existed in the first place. Over 800,000 Michiganders submitted comments opposing the project with only 10 in favor, and yet the permit was still granted and has yet to be reversed even in the new administration. The Ice Mountain Well is already negatively impacting the lakes and streams in Osceola County where they're pumping 400 gallons of our water for basically free. Nestle is already making massive profits with inadequate safeguards and our environment is suffering. If a private equity company is buying this operation, they must think that there's still costs to be cut, more money to squeeze out of our land. When it comes to our water, there is no room for shortcuts. Cutting cost in Flint got people killed and poisoned their water for years, impacting them forever. In the 117th Congress, I am continuing to be vice chair of the Oversight Committee Subcommittee on Environment and will push using this powerful platform to directly investigate water bottling operations, including those done by Nestle. Unfortunately, the pandemic delayed our planned hearing on Nestle's water bottling, but I hope this year we can will continue together in challenging corporate greed and standing up for our water, both as a source of human life and also as a critical component of our natural world. As important as the work in Congress is, you all are on the front lines doing the critical grassroots organizing that we all cannot live without. Now is the time to get loud. We have partners in Lansing and in Washington who are more receptive to environmental justice than anyone who has come before them. So we have a right to raise our voices and demand that they support our work. Thank you all so much again for being water warriors. And remember now and always, water is a human right. Thank you. Representative Rashida Tlaib for being a leader in water and environmental justice. Next, we'll hear from a fellow Canadian. Maude Barlow is an activist who has campaigned to have water recognized as a human right and is author of 19 books, including Whose Water Is It Anyway? Taking Water Protection into Public Hands. I am truly honored to welcome Maud Barlow to the stage. Hi, I'm Maud Barlow, and I'm really pleased to be part of this uh, struggle against Nestle. I've been fighting Nestle for 25 years since they first came looking for water in my province of Ontario in Canada. There are many ways in which water is being privatized, commodified, financialized and Nestle plays a big role in that. It will be a very dangerous thing if Nestle sells its assets, what they're not, they don't belong to them, but they have these rights uh, to private equity companies because it will be much more difficult uh, to protect water when it's held by whom? Investors. We have to get our governments to take a stand. I've been very excited about my Blue Communities Project where municipalities around the world are saying not only water is a, a, a human right and they're going to protect it and a public trust, so no privatization, but doing away with bottled water in municipalities. Um, Los Angeles has been the first big municipality in, in uh, the United States, but we have uh, cities like Berlin and Paris and Montreal and Vancouver have all said no to bottled water and this is, this is a movement whose time has come. We're drowning in plastic. So I join you here tonight, um, uh, delighted to be part of this. Uh, water is a human right, it's a public trust, 
and Nestle has no right to be coming into our communities and destroying local water systems. Um, solidarity with you all. Thank you, Maud Barlow. Next up, we'll hear from folks on the ground in communities across Canada and U.S. who are dedicated to the fight to reclaim troubled waters. First, we'll hear about the fight in Freiburg, Maine, where after decades of extraction, Nestle received a 45-year permit to extract water. Here, Nestle faces an ongoing legal battle where they claim that what the water they take is from a spring when it's actually sourced from a well drilled deep into an aquifer close to a stream. Here to tell us more about that is Nikki Sakara, co-founder of Community Water Justice and her son, Luke. Hello from Freiburg, Maine, everyone. I'm Nikki. This is my son, Luke, and we're co-founders of Community Water Justice. We're based in the Western Mountains of Maine in the Mount Washington Valley within the Saco River watershed in the occupied territory of the Abenaki. Nestle has been operating in Maine since they bought the Poland Spring Water Company from Perrier in 1992. Since that time, Nestle has grown their brand significantly to three plastic bottling facilities in Western Maine that mines water from 10 different towns. The bottling facility in Hollis is said, said to be the second largest in the world, producing over 250 uh, cases of 16 ounce bottles per day in that one location alone. Nestle now exports over a billion gallons per year from local aquifers, which is an amount that equals to over 850 gallons per person per year from the state of Maine. Nestle has taken advantage of our state's outdated legal infrastructure. We are one of only three states left in the United States that has the absolute dominion or absolute capture law in place from the 1800s. Every recent attempt to adopt an improved law at the state level is met with strong corporate opposition that gives Nestle and other water privatizers an advantage over local communities and our ecosystem. Though there has been previous efforts against Nestle, we started researching their history in Maine in 2010, and in 2012 started organizing when we learned that Nestle was trying to secure a contract with our privately owned municipal water supplier that would last up to 45 years. Because the contract was between two private companies, our community's concerns were rejected. It took us one and a half years to get all of the main public utilities commissioners to recuse themselves from the case as they all had financial ties to Nestle. After taking the case up to the main state Supreme Court, the court determined that it was not within the purview of the public utilities commission to consider environmental impacts of exporting Maine's water. It's important to note that this was a U.S. precedent-setting case for a contract of this length, and our court approved it without the consent of the people. Nestle has also achieved regulatory capture of our state agencies, where there are many conflicts of interest, including current Nestle employees on our Board of Environmental Protection and on the Board of the Maine Drinking Water Program. This allows Nestle the benefit of undue influence and to potentially dictate their own profit and risk as these boards are legally designed to work with other state agencies. It was revealed that Nestle owns about 20,000 acres of land in the United States, which allows them access to our water sources and protects their wellheads for their shareholders' future profits. 6,000 of those acres are in Maine, and 3,000 are within our very own Saco River watershed alone. Currently, there's a lawsuit against Nestle for the alleged mislabeling of Poland spring water. This lawsuit claims that the labeling is fraudulent because it does not come from a natural spring. Nestle does not harvest water directly from a spring. They drill a borehole nearby the spring and mine water from deep within the aquifer below. Here in Freiburg, the lawsuit states that the water is actually piped into the spring and would not naturally exist otherwise. There was an earlier lawsuit against Nestle over a decade ago because the original Poland Spring for which the brand was named was pumped dry. They ended up settling out of court for $10 million in donations to charitable organizations. When Nestle claims that they're in their advertisements that they are a good neighbor, we know that they're not a good neighbor. The $10 million that they were ordered to donate wound up as part of their public relations campaign. Water sits at the nexus of all human rights. And since it is essential to our survival, 
and it's the basis of all other rights to exist. And most importantly, that no living thing can survive without it. I hope you'll join me and my colleagues in protecting the local waters which sustain you. Thank you for being with us here today. Thank you to Nikki and Luke for your dedication to this fight and for sharing your story with us here today. Now we're gonna bring it back to Canada to a fight close to me in Wellington County. Here, we'll hear about the continued and long-standing dispute between Nestle and water protectors who seek to phase out all permits to take water for bottling. Here to tell us more is Makasha Looking Horse. Makasha is an Indigenous youth from Six Nations of the Grand River in Ontario, Canada. She is, a dedicated, she is dedicated to the fight against Nestle as a student, a water activist, an educator, and a podcast host. Take it away, Makasha. Six Nations need a gaino. Hi everybody, my name is Makasha Looking Horse. I'm Mohawk Wolf Clan and Lakota from Six Nations territory. I want to say hi from Six Nations and I'm so honored to be here to talk to you guys. My Mohawk culture is all about giving thanks to everything that gives us life. And that's including water. It's one of the most important medic medicines to our people, to our Lakota people, to uh, my Mohawk people, to Haudenosaunee people, to Ungwehoi people, all over all over the world. And that's one common thing is that we um, give thanks to the water because it's the most important medicine that we can put into our bodies. And it is also a life giver, like we are as women. It gives life to in the entire world and to everything that is outside, including us. And it, it also protects our babies that are inside the womb. And so we have this long relationship with, as women, to take care of the water. Being a water protector is much more than just that title. It's part of my responsibility as a Ongwehowe, as a Lakota woman, because we have this responsibility to the water, um, because it's a life giver just like we are. Water is a human right and it should be free and accessible to everybody, uh, every color, every race uh, around the world. And that's why I also took on Nestle, um, because they were taking 3.6 million liters of water out of our aquifer. It triggered me even more that this is happening and my community of Six Nations is going without clean water. And so we went with the clan mothers and we gave them a cease and desist to get them off of our land and stop taking our water. I held multiple protests with the Wellington Water Watchers and made sure that they knew that we did not agree with this and we want them to stop taking our water and get off of our land. That is our treaty land and our Indigenous land um, and it's rightfully ours. But they need to pay in some shape, way or form to the Six Nations community for all of the water that they have stolen, handed back to the Six Nations territories and we can decide for ourselves what we want to do with it but that is rightfully ours and that's what we're fighting for. We need to pressure our government system to make sure that no water bottling companies are allowed to steal our water from underneath our feet. Raise your voice and write letters to your government system and we can make this a global change. Nothing can live without water and so it's common sense that we need to make sure that we protect the water because it, it constantly protects us and that's why it's so important that we have to fight against these water bottling companies such as Nestle that is simply taking and stealing water and selling it for, for profit. Water is a source of life and not a resource. We need to get that message across the world. And we are still on that journey and, and making that happen. And I hope that we can spread awareness together what Nestle has, been, has done and what could the Canadian government is also doing um, to First Nations reserves in Canada and making them go without clean drinking water. And so that's what we need to spread awareness about because it's not known within Canada and I hope that we can all move together and um, seek justice for our water bodies, for our environment and for ourselves. 
Yahweh, thank you. Thank you, Makasha, for your dedication, your passion, and your voice in this fight to reclaim troubled waters. You can check out Makasha's podcast at the link in the event description. We will now turn our attention to the fight in Everett, Michigan, where despite nearby communities like Flint lacking access to safe public drinking water, Nestle seeks to ramp up its water extraction and continue the existing harm on local streams. Please welcome Peggy Case, president of Michigan Citizens for Water and Conservation, to share more about this ongoing fight. Nestle Bottle Company came to Michigan in 1998 after they'd been kicked out of Wisconsin. And they got a permit easily from the state that allowed them to pump 400 gallons per minute from a spring in Macosta County that fed into uh, the dead stream and several little lakes. Two years into their pumping, the citizens began to notice problems with mud flats and the streams and the lakes drying down. They formed an organization, Michigan Citizens for Water Conservation, and filed a lawsuit against Nestle. The lawsuit took nine years to resolve, and it cost a million dollars. But we won a settlement that forced Nestle to reduce their pumping, pumping by half and not pump at all during times of drought. So it was a precedent-setting case that still stands. Nestle took their operation to, they're still pumping in that area, but they took their operation up to Everett and started pumping from a well that they had dug earlier in Everett, a spring water well feeding into two pristine trout streams. Same kind of situation. They pumped at 150 gallons per minute initially. And then in 2016, they asked for a permit from the state to pump at 400 gallons per minute, the same that they had lost in Macosta County. The citizens of Michigan were pretty outraged by this once we've alerted them. They were uh, quite uh, upset at the disparity between the treatment of people in Detroit and Flint and the treatment of, of Nestle. Nestle was getting going to get 210 million gallons of water for a filing fee of $200. Meanwhile, Flint was in the middle of the Flint water disaster where everyone had been poisoned by the very same state that was granting Nestle this free water. And in Detroit, over 100,000 people had been turned off, had the water shut off for inability to pay exorbitant water bills. So with those two injustices in mind, um, people rallied, demanded a public hearing, we brought buses of people from Detroit and Flint to the hearing in Big Rapids, Michigan. Uh, many people testified. It didn't matter. Nestle was granted the pump, uh, the print permit anyway in 2018. So we were forced to file a contested case about it uh, with the department. We spent two years uh, working on that. And then the department decided to dismiss the case altogether on a technicality and threw it out. So they wasted all that time and all that money in order to tell us that we weren't qualified or we couldn't qualify to contest the permit. So we are right now uh, in another uh, court process with the circuit court trying to pro uh, appeal that ruling. We are trying to get the attorney general to investigate the system uh, situation on the ground because the same things happened in uh, Everett at 150 gallons per minute. Mud flats, streams drawn down, dried uh, feeder creeks, etc. So we want the Attorney General to investigate on the ground, which is something that uh, nobody's been willing to do so far. Uh, and we want uh, the state to also continue the moratorium on water shutoffs that was put in place when the pandemic hit so that the people who have no clear, no real water, uh, get their water back. So all of those uh, demands are floating around out there. We encourage people to help us uh, get the attention of the proper authorities to make sure that these things happen. You know, I am always so inspired when I hear from these frontline leaders working tirelessly to defend streams, springs, aquifers, and more all across this continent and all around the world. Now, the Nestle extraction site closest to my home is in the San Bernardino National Forest in Southern California, where Nestle has been removing millions of gallons of water from public lands, even throughout the worst drought in state history. 
That's why in 2015, the Story of Stuff Project worked with our community partners to produce this short film highlighting that fight. Let's take a look. You know, I only have a few years left in life, maybe 20 years, 15 maybe. So I've thought about what's the most important thing that I could do in the time that I have here. And uh, taking care of my grandkids and making sure that they have a place to enjoy, that they have streams to enjoy, that they have wildlife to enjoy. That's probably one of the most important things I can do. Nestle is drawing water from a spring or a well within the national forest, within public lands that are owned by the people of the United States. It's drawing that water and then it's diverting it in a pipe down several miles to outside of the forest. Nestle has an expired special use permit I issued in 1978 that expired in 1988. Uh, that permit allowed them to occupy national forest land with the infrastructure necessary to remove water. And they take anywhere from uh, 50 to 150 million gallons a year depending on uh, certain conditions. So the Forest Service maybe is getting a very, a pittance of what this water is worth. We're subsidizing a business that depletes that public land resource and that then creates a cost on down the line in its life cycle as well in the waste management cost. The drought drags on, the watershed, you know, grows drier. Why is a foreign corporation like Nestle being allowed to withdraw millions and millions of gallons out of our watershed, making a huge, huge profit? Do you have any intention of ceasing bottle, bottling operations in, in, in California? Uh, absolutely not. Uh, in fact, uh, if I could increase it, I would. We feel good about what we're doing. Strawberry Creek is just barely hanging on, basically, because there's so much water removed. And then when we saw the drought that's currently going on, that's the worst drought in recorded history here. Um, so all of that together made me really worry about Strawberry Creek. I thought there's a good chance we could completely dry Strawberry Creek up. Uh, the strawberry drainage is, uh, is a critical drainage for uh, our plant and animal communities. And it becomes more and more critical every year because as the urban population in Southern California grows, uh, the national forests down in Southern California are becoming more and more isolated islands. Of, of plant and animal communities. And this is a dry habitat, which means that those riparian areas, those areas that are wet, are essential, especially in dry years like this year, to wildlife. And it's at 0.18 now, 0.18 cubic feet per second, which is nothing. I mean, it's almost no water. Species that have lived there over eons of time could be lost. It's just a, it's a terrible thing. The Forest Service hasn't looked at this in a number of years, and so they can't say, yes, we're protecting those public resources. Yes, we're making sure that there's sufficient water for all the species. Yes, we're making sure that we're holding this in trust for the people of the United States. We're using it in a sustainable way. And they're obligated by law to use the resources on the National Forest in a sustainable way. A year ago, I started begging the Forest Service and Nestle's to start meeting together to start talking about Strawberry Creek, to work together on their permit and on the uh, and on protecting the national forest and I was begging them to do that and uh, and still nothing's happened there's still no meetings there's just talk everybody in California is affected by the drought but not Nestle or any other water bottling company I mean this is our water the water in the in those mountains belong to every Californian and every taxpayer in America personally I invested 40 plus years of my life being a professional forester and I care a great deal that public land in our country is properly managed, especially in a manner that makes sure that the goods and services it provides are there for future generations. And that's not how it's being managed right now. We're back. Hi again, Michael from the Story of Stuff here in California. Before we head to our next speaker, I wanted to share an update on the fight you just heard about in the San Bernardino National Forest. Uh, as Brett mentioned, this short film was made five years ago, and in many ways, the issues remain the same. California has had another dry winter. Strawberry Creek is still being drained, and in fact, Nestle has actually increased the amount of water it takes the last several years. 
But the grassroots activists you saw in that clip, including the two retired rangers who blew the whistle on Nestle, they haven't quit. And if there's one thing I've learned from working with grassroots groups like theirs, it's that their dogged determination to protect our water should never be underestimated. Which is why I wasn't totally surprised when Amanda Fry, who you saw in that clip, turned up some surprising research several years ago. Turns out the story Nestle has been spinning for years about their right to the water under the National Forest was just that, a story. So together, we challenged Nestle's water rights before our state's water board, and in a preliminary ruling, the board agreed with us. Now we're pressuring the water board to finalize its investigation and tell Nestle once and for all that this land and the water below it is the public's to steward, not Nestle's. Next up, it's my honor to introduce Marilee Gibson, a leader from the group Our Santa Fe River in Florida, where the state just gave Nestle permission to increase its take from local springs to a million gallons a day. Marilee, take it away. Hello, everybody. Marilee here from Our Santa Fe River. Our community just faced off with Nestle for yet another water bottle permit using Florida Springs water. As if six springs were not enough already tapped by Nestle to turn out plastic bottles of water, Nestle was on the make and grabbed yet another water use permit issued to a private company. This private company intends to sell the public's water, spring water coming into Ginny Springs and Devil Springs system from the Santa Fe River to this international behemoth corporation. When Nestle secures this permit, they will be on their way to tapping some of the most protected water in Florida and in the continent of North America. In Florida alone, this corporation has secured 1.7 billion gallons of water annually to be used to commodify our natural resources. At this plant alone in High Springs, Florida, Nestle intends to manufacture and fill six thousand bottles per minute. A completely unsustainable and reckless reason to use fresh water that by all rights should be flowing into our iconic Florida Springs, feeding the Santa Fe River and the Suwannee River and the Florida estuaries in the Gulf of Mexico. Our Santa Fe River has been the frontline organization working with so many community members and other organizations to stop this water grab. Our volunteer work has produced over 19,000 comments into the Florida Water Manager's Permit Review, opposing this water use for plastics. Though the permit was issued at the end of February 2021, we are not done yet. We have filed two lawsuits to end this water bottle permit. One of those lawsuits will make the water bottlers pay for the water they take for free in Florida. The other bigger looming question we are also faced with today is just who will own some of the most drinkable water in the Western Hemisphere when Nestle closes the deal with this buyout company, a business deal announced just a few short weeks ago. We've been duped in Florida by the private company who managed to secure the water use permit from the Florida water managers. This scheme needs to be stopped Water is for the birds, the fish, the river, the springs, and for us. We need the water more than Nestle. It's time to end this deal and give the water back to the communities from which it flows. If you are shopping for water, you are part of the problem. Fill your water from your home tap and don't buy this stuff. Thank you, Marilee. Next, we're heading back west to Chafee County, Colorado, where county commissioners are deliberating on a permit renewal application from Nestle. Here to tell us about the effort to unbottle and protect Chafee County water is Jen Swasana. Take it away, Jen. Hello from beautiful Chafee County, Colorado. I feel so lucky to live here in this outdoor recreation paradise in a community that strives to be a model for sustainability. Our economy relies on whitewater rafting, skiing, mountain biking, and mountain climbing. So what is Nestle doing here? Well, back in 2008, 2009, it was a bit of a different story. They came swooping in during the recession and promised jobs and other benefits, such as a uh, conservation of land, a mile stretch of land along the Arkansas River near what is today Browns Canyon National Monument. 
So don't get me wrong, residents at the time came out in force against a 10-year permit allowing Nestle's water mining operation here. But as one of the deciding county commissioners at the time said, they feared our small county with limited resources would have been sued by this billion dollar corporation. So essentially Nestle bullied and bribed their way in. A professional ecologist warned us that this operation was not sustainable and pointed out shady things like there were bird surveys done in February. But a college professor who literally had millions to gain from selling his land to Nestle also had influence over the final ecological report. So fast forward till now, and the permit has expired and Nestle is requesting a renewal. But the times have changed. Our county's population is booming. We're experiencing severe drought. And last year we had the largest wildfires in Colorado's recorded history. The effects of climate change and plastic pollution are no longer debatable. And Nestle didn't even meet their contractual commitments that they made over a decade ago. They've been unable to hire 50% of their truck drivers locally and still have not managed to put land into a conservation easement. Instead, they traded away that prime river frontage land for development of a small subdivision to a family with political influence. They managed to get their own consultants on the planning commission, and one of them even had a vote in favor of the subdivision. It's simply insane to continue to permit Nestle to suck and truck hundreds of millions of gallons of water out of this valley. Just last year, they made 2,700 dangerous treks over mountain passes in semis, each hauling 8,000 gallons of water to be bottled in plastic in a facility in Denver, just to be sold back to us as Arrowhead brand water. Even crazier is that this is legally considered to be a beneficial use of water. Water is so scarce here that until just recently, it was against the law to even collect rainwater in a bucket. And now there are essentially water police flying drones across the state locating houses with illegal backyard ponds because of the loss of water from evaporation. So Colorado law requires Nestle to purchase water from a water district to quote, replace what they take from the Arkansas River watershed. Well, what does that mean? Nestle purchases augmentation water, which is piped from the overallocated drought-stricken Colorado River Basin on the other side of the Continental Divide through a tunnel in the mountain into a reservoir on this side, where it is then released into the Arkansas River. This so-called replacement water assures people with senior right or, <clears throat> it assures people with entitled senior water rights downstream get their water, but it does not recharge the aquifer where Nestle's water is taken. And it's not the same quality of water. The shell game may be legal, by our outdated man-made laws, but it goes against the laws of nature. Any other use of this water would be more beneficial than what Nestle is doing, which is just commodification of water. Let's just simply stop this insanity and support the Chafee County commissioners in denying another 10-year permit to Nestle or to their new shady Wall Street owners operating under their name. Thank you. Wow, thank you, Jen. Remember, no matter where you live, these local groups could use your support. Most of the folks you've heard from here today are volunteer organizers working tirelessly and fearlessly, day after day, up against one of the largest corporations in the world. They could really use your help. Use the link in the event description or visit storyofstuff.org slash Nestle to connect with these local leaders. And now I'm pleased to welcome my colleague, Mike Balkwell, the campaign director for the Wellington Water Watchers, who will help us pass around the virtual hat so we can help fuel these grassroots groups fighting to reclaim troubled waters. Thank you, Megan. I'm happy to be with everybody tonight, to be with people who believe that water is a human right, who oppose Nestle's predatory behaviors, uh, who believe waters for life, not profit, and want to stop the largest transfer of private water wealth in recent memory.
<clears throat> I work with Water Watches in Wellington County in Ontario. I've met all the people who you spoke to, who, who we've heard from, from all those communities in the last little bit. I've had the honour and privilege of working with them all. And Nikki and Luke and Peggy and Makasha and Marilee and Jen and Steve and others, they're all volunteers. They lead grassroots groups and they mobilize more people every day to protect water in their communities. They're fierce, they're fun, and they don't quit. They do this for you, they do this for people in their communities, they do this for me, they do this for future generations. In a moment, I'm going to ask you to make a pledge to donate money to support the work of these inspiring leaders. First, I want to tell you why, the word support, why your support to them is so important. You heard earlier that Rashida Tlaib has promised to investigate this issue, and she said the leadership by these people at the grassroots level, level is critical to her making this a national issue. She said, help them get loud. And you can help them in a few moments when I ask you to make a donation to help them get loud. Maud Barlow reminds us we're up against big corporate interests. You've heard just now from Jen about the kind of corporate bullying that Nestle has been up to and has had the money to, to fund based on profits they've earned taking our water from us, selling it back to taking nature's water and selling it back to us. They bankroll expensive lawyers, experts, lobbyists in their attempt to control access to water in these communities. As difficult as this, the stories you heard may sound, let's remember that together, all of us have driven Nestle out of North America. They're leaving. And it's time for us to finish the job and stop their water wealth being transferred to a private equity company. Now, the story from the years gone by and the, and the story still now is a David and Goliath story. Actually, it's a Davida against Goliath story because women are most often on the front lines leading their communities to protect water. You can support the leadership of these people in their communities by making a donation tonight. Now, these groups all operate on shoestring budgets. And imagine, just think how much stronger they'll be with the money you pledged to them tonight. Davida needs stronger slingshots. She needs more pebbles to put in her slingshot. She has a good and true aim, but she needs more ammunition, and you can help with that. It's a critical moment in North America now to intervene because Nestle's leaving. And in this, mo in this moment, there's an opportunity to demand that the legislators in both our countries, Canada and the U.S., intervene and end this massive water extraction. Now, the story of stuff has committed that all funds we raise tonight, right now, will be divided equally among the water warriors that you've heard from tonight. Are you ready to make a difference? Here's how you can make your pledge. You're going to type your pledge into the comments section of the Facebook or YouTube live stream page. And they're going to be posted in front of us here. When you post your pledge, we'll all see it on the screen. We're going to add it up and see how much of a difference we can make together. There's going to be a little bit of a lag time because of the magic of working online between when you post it and when we see it. Um, but we're, all, we're going to be able to do that. After you make your pledge, please go to the storyofstuff.org slash Nestle. You can see that online. And you will receive a charitable tax receipt for your donation. How we're going to do this is I'm going to ask for pledges of a specific amount and ask you to post a pledge in the comments section in response to that amount. That will encourage each us, encourage us, empower each of us with our pledge of support and see what we're collectively able to do to help the leaders you've seen just now. I'm going to start with a big amount. And I'm going to start with a big amount because I don't underestimate how important it is to you to stop the largest transfer of private water wealth in recent memory, and how important it is to you to make sure water is for life, not profit. So here we go, are you ready? I'd like to know if there's somebody watching tonight who's tuned in who would like to pledge $10,000. How you do that is you go to the comment box, you put your name in, you type in the number $10,000, and that's how we see that 
that uh, appear before us. I see that uh, people are already making some donations. I've seen 100, I've seen 50, I've seen another 100. It's good to see these posts coming in. But there may be somebody out there who's able to make a $10,000 donation or is able, to, maybe belongs to a foundation or a, feder or a union or a faith organization and could pledge that amount. Is there anybody out there who will pledge $10,000? While we're watching, is there anybody out there who would make a pledge of $7,500? I'm watching the comment boxes. Thank you, Watch What the Health, for the $100 pledge. $7,500 is going to help uh, Peggy to pay lawyers in Michigan to fight Nestle there. It's going to help, help uh, Jen to hire a lawyer in Colorado and to hire an expert to make their case to the county commissioners. It's going to help Mary Lee in their legal case to, uh, which they're, where they're conducting to prove that water is the public trust. Glad, is it in US or Canadian? <laughs> Somebody asks, uh, whatever your donation is from wherever you are, we'll count it. Um, is there somebody who would donate $5,000? To somebody who would make a $5,000 pledge to support the work of Makasha on Six Nations and to help her and the, her, uh, and the people of Six Nations to reclaim that property in the name of their community. And the, it may be true, I'm more familiar with the situation in Canada than the States, but uh, at Six Nations, they don't have access to clean water. They have what's called the boil water advisory. They have to boil their water before they're able to drink it and use it. Uh, and we're act they're actually uh, making the claim that the Ontario government should return the Aberfoyle, uh, Nestle's Aberfoyle complex to them at Six Nations. Is there anybody who would, do who would make a pledge of $3,000 to support this campaign? I'm donating $10 a month as a single mom with three kids in Victoria, BC, says Naomi Fix, one of the most expensive cities in the world. If a million single moms did this, it would be a lot. You are absolutely right, Naomi. And TCD Penn said, I've just donated a second $50. Thank you very much for doing that. I'm watching to see if there's anybody who's pledging $3,000. There's, we're at total donations of 2,000 so far. Um, uh, here's somebody, Mary Val, C8. Oh, I won't try and read that. Pledges $100, even though we're a grassroots collective with zero budget for volunteer, volunteers. That's terrific. Thank you. Thank you, Raven Stevens, for the $50 you just pledged. Sarah Green, $100. Thank you, Jen Swachina, and all the leaders in this effort. Thank you very much. Is there anyone who would pledge $1,000? So thank you, Sarah, for your $100 pledge just now. Is there anybody who's listening who's able, interested, and willing to pledge $1,000 to support the groups who are resisting Nestle across North America? Thank you, Janet Chamberlain, for your $100 donation. Is there anybody who's willing to pledge $500 to support the work of all these groups? You see from the chart that's in front of you right now, what's, what's required in all those communities. Lisa Richardson, thank you for your $100 donation. Your donations are supporting very important work by very dedicated and as I said, fierce and fun people in communities across North America. Janet Baxter has just donated 100, thank you, Janet. Uh, Jay Frank has just donated 200, thank you very much. Is there someone who would pledge $500? Lynn Brown's pledged 50, thank you. Is there anybody who would pledge $500? Angelita DeVito's pledged $25, thank you. You can enter your pledge as a comment. Julie's donating $100, thank you. That's terrific. There's, this is a little bit like an online telethon and behind us, $500 from Alex Wilson, thank you, Alex. $100 from Pamela Dixon. I pledge 50 to fight Nestle in Freiburg, Maine, near where I summer. Thank you, Nancy Price. Sylvia Pivko just donated $500. Thank you. I did pledge, I'm pledging $100 from Ontario. Thank you, Betty Lou. Um, we're at $4,000. There are uh, six groups that we're supporting to, 
provide money to. Elaine Page has just donated 360 from Toronto. She thanks us. She thanks everybody for all their hard work. Um, I know that the pledging is going to be continuing. We're at $4,000. I'm hoping we can get to five. We're, uh, the pledging will continue as the uh, production goes on. In a few moments, we're going to hear from a musical group called the Tune Yards. They're going to sing a song about water. While, that, while they're playing, we'll hope you'll enjoy that song. And that in addition to that, you'll take that moment to go to the storyofstuff.org slash Nestle and fulfill your pledge. Um, the pledges are very important to us. Diane Saunders has pledged $50. Fight the fight. We are fighting the fight. Your support means a lot to us. Uh, your collective pledges mean uh, that these, these groups can continue. Uh, here we go, a berry clout to all the water justice leaders. You're amazing. Great communication confirming that Nestle is a paras parasitic organization. Oops, I lost. I couldn't finish reading that to you, folks. Hope you saw it. $50 from Joy Keen. Thank you, Joy. Um, the, uh, another $50 from Lulu Laurie. $200 from Danny Lindemood. Thank you, Danny. We are going, we're over $5,000. That's terrific. That's a good start. If we get to $6,000, we'll be able to give $1,000 to every group that was on tonight. The, um, I'm going to turn this back to um, Brett in just a moment. I'm a sustaining supporter of Food and Water Watch, says Nick, He's, and for $25 a month, thank you. And uh, your donation and your solidarity will carry us all forward in the months to come. So keep on pledging, keep on donating. Uh, we'll come back before the evening's over with a complete total. And Brett, when you're ready, I'm gonna turn it back to you. Great, thank you so much, Mike. And thank you all on behalf of all of us, community members and water warriors all across the continent, all around the world for your generous pledges and your contribution. So remember, after making that pledge in the comment section of the stream, please make sure to go ahead and complete your contribution. Just visit storyofstuff.org slash Nestle and click on the link to complete your gift. So far, I see that we have pledges totaling over $5,000. Still clicking up. Let's see if we can push it to $6,000. We can divide that up among all of those frontline groups. Let me tell you that money goes a long way when we put it in the hands of local leaders. So while you all go ahead and complete those contributions, I am thrilled to introduce our musical guest, Tune Yards. And you know, Megan, I actually saw Tune Yards in concert a couple of years ago. Sorry, concert? What's a concert? Oh yeah, well, you're not gonna believe this. A concert was when a bunch of people would get together in real life, they would listen to music, they would dance. Right, I remember that now. Wow, it's been a long time. It sure has, but just because we're not together doesn't mean we can't dance. So here to put the move in movement, it's Tune Yards.
and I gave them to this special guy. When he had enough of them, he bought himself a cherry pie. He gave me a dollar, a blood-soaked dollar. I cannot get the spot out, but it's okay. It still works in the store. Greasy man, come and dig my well. Never thought your water is a burning hell. Stop me up with your homegrown nice. Anything make me shit nice. Sipples on me and wine. Sipples on me and wine. And a two-pound chicken dance better with friends. A two-pound chicken dance better with two. And I know you where to find me. You, you so listen up. No water in the water fountain. No water in the water fountain. Oh, sorry, I didn't see you all there. Well, thank you so much to Tune Yards for uh, contributing that amazing performance. Their new album, Sketchy, comes out on March 26th. Check out the link in the video description to pre-order. Hey, let's check in with the fundraising team behind the scenes. They've been crunching the numbers. It looks like we've received pledges totaling, whoa, we just crossed over $7,000. Now I see that we've gotten $3,000 in contributions in so far. So please, please do help us close the gap. If you've pledged, or even if you haven't, go on over to storyofstuff.org slash Nestle to make a contribution. And just as we were jamming out to Tune Yards, got a text that the Story of Stuff project will match all of the contributions raised today. So tell you what, can we push all the way up to $10,000? Help us get that money in the hands of the frontline organizers. I tell you, it goes a long way. Remember, Nestle is set to walk away from the sale of their bulk bottled water division with over $4 billion. So we may not get quite that far tonight, but let's make sure that our movement's war chest is topped off too. Well, while you all keep those contributions coming in and your photos in the photo booth, let's go ahead and recap why it's so important that we keep public water under public stewardship. My name is Bernard C. Jack Young, mayor of the great city of Baltimore. Imagine life without a reliable water supply, sewage, or wastewater treatment. You'll probably agree that access to clean, safe water is a human right, right? So why don't our elected officials seem to prioritize it? The federal government is investing way less in water services than ever before, thanks in part to the efforts of the private water industry. But water is a public good that relies on public funds. So many cities across the U.S. are facing significant water woes. Short on dollars and stuck with aging infrastructure? These cities have become vulnerable to corporations that swoop in with promises of new pipes and better services for their residents. All these cities have to do is turn over control of their public water system to a corporation that will run them with little oversight. What could go wrong? A lot, as it turns out. Corporations offer a variety of privatization schemes, promising they'll save city money. But when water is privatized, water bills are often much higher than local government-owned utility rates. Corporations say they'll invest in our system and their service will improve. But cost-cutting to maximize their profit makes that impossible. Many systems experience frequent main breaks, service disruption, and even the drastic downsizing of workforces, meaning fewer jobs and people to keep things running safely. And those with the least ability to pay, they're hit hardest by water privatization. Higher income communities tend to have better access to services because they can afford rising rates, which only heightens inequality. 
And what happens if a city wants to break free from a deal gone awry? They often have to buy back their own infrastructure or pay millions of dollars in termination fees. But it doesn't have to be this way. Cities across the country are finding innovative new ways to publicly manage their water system. So people come first, not profits. Like Philadelphia, where 40% of households were unable to pay their increasing bills. They implemented something called a tiered assistant program, where residents pay a price that's relative to their income. Now residents can afford essential water services, and their infrastructure gets a much-needed investment without turning to profit-driven corporations. South Bend, Indiana also avoided privatization, despite needing millions in system improvements. They integrated smart sewers that identified leakage areas and better managed the system, saving them $400 million, enough to keep public control. And my city, Baltimore, became the first U.S. city to ban certain forms of privatization, making a long-term commitment to public water. Let's spread the word about the hundreds of successful public water solutions being tested around the country. We know what really happens when a city turns over this precious resource to corporations. Let your local officials know that you support public water solutions and urge your Congress members to reinvest in our water systems nationwide. Let's send a message that water is a public good and should not be privately controlled. Keep our water system in public hands. great reminder of why this fight is so important. Thank you all again for your generous contributions. We can't stress enough the difference these contributions make to local leaders on the front lines in this battle. If you are able to, making a contribution today of any amount is a great way to show your gratitude to the local leaders who are dedicated to water for life, not for profit. And we've been loving seeing your photos come in in our photo booth. I am always just filled with such hope when I see what a vibrant and large movement this really is. So thank you all for stepping up to help show off the people power behind this campaign. Let's keep those photos coming. Be sure to download your snap, set it as your profile picture, or share it on social media with the hashtag Reclaim Troubled Waters. You can even tweet it at Nestle. Let's make sure that they know that we are on their heels. While you make those contributions and continue to take those impactful rally pictures, we bring you this plastic service announcements from our friends at Lonely Whale. Welcome back to the show. Do you love the taste of eternity? Then you'll love these plastic water bottles. Plastic water bottles, it's the best thing since a glass of water. They'll always take up space. When you're dead, when your children are dead, they'll still be around. You thought it just came from your tap? Oh, no, no, no. It comes in a bottle now. Thank you for joining us. We want to ask you this. How do you hydrate? How do I hydrate? Plastic free, baby. Plastic free. Plastic water bottles only came into use in the 90s, and now we act like it's the only way we can drink water. 91% of plastic ever produced has not been recycled. I hydrate like I know plastic water bottles are among the top five most common items found in beach cleanups around the world. I hydrate like the planet is a beautiful place, and we want to keep it that way. I hydrate like I don't want to move to Mars. I hydrate like I will not let the plastic industry exploit us. I hydrate like plastic doesn't even go here. Hydrate like your mother taught you better. Like 500 billion plastic bottles are used around the globe annually. You don't have to use it, so, so why do it? Water bottles, don't use them. What? <laughs> Hydrate like a future with clean seas depends on it. Because if we don't change our ways, the ocean is expected to have more plastic than fish by 2050. Hydrate like you're on top of the world. Hydrate like the ocean, the planet, and future generations depend on it. Because we do. Just please stop using single-use plastic water bottles. Folks, have you taken action yet? Remember, joining us today was just the first step. Now we need you to flex your citizen muscles by taking action. 
So head on over to storyofstuff.org slash Nestle to join, give, and share. Now, our pledges are up to over $7,000, almost $7,400. I see that we've gotten about $5,300 in contributions in the door. So if you made that pledge, go ahead, visit storyofstuff.org slash Nestle to complete your contribution. And remember, all of those contributions will be matched by the Story of Stuff project. So let's help get some money in the hands of local organizers to continue their fight against Nestle's water exploitation. Remember folks, this sale represents one of the largest transfers of private water wealth in history. We are pushing for oversight on this deal. If you live in Canada or US, please just take two minutes to write or call your elected officials to make sure Nestle has answers for their actions. Well, folks, that brings us to the end of our program today. I'd like to thank everyone that helped make this event possible, and it was a lot of folks. Our musical artists, Alicia Brilla and Tune Yards, all of our speakers, and the amazing production team, We and Goliath, for putting so much attention and energy into making this event happen. So if you need help with your virtual events, I can't recommend them enough. Find them over at weandgoliath.com. And thank you to everybody here who joined us tonight. This event would not have been possible without you taking the time to rally with us. Before you leave, remember to head on over to thestoryofstuff.org slash Nestle to take action to end extraction and return people's water back to public stewardship. Thank you, everybody. Stay safe and stay thirsty for water justice. in the store. Greasy men come and dig my well. Never thought your water is a burning hell. Stuff me up with your homegrown rice. Anything make me shit nice. Sipples on me and wet. Sipples on me and wet. And a two pound chicken dance better with friends. A two pound chicken dance better with two. And I know where to find you. So listen to the words I say. Let it sink in your head. Come on, it go round and round and round. Now I'm in your bed. How did I get ahead? Woo! Hey! Your fingers to my head. Would you, would you listen to the words I say? Sound like a bouquet. 
in the store. Greasy man, come and dig my well. Never thought your water is a burning hell. Stop me up with your homegrown nice. Anything make me shit nice. Sipples on me and win. Sipples on me and win. And a two-pound chicken dance better with friends. A two-pound chicken dance better with two. And I know where to find you. So listen to the words I say. Let it sink in your head. My body go round and round and round. Now I'm in your bed. How did I get ahead? Ooh, hey. Your fingers to my head. Gonna get the water. 